brothers and sisters. Ain't nobody here today, is it? Don't look like it. Say good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, Brother Garvey. Brothers and sisters, today's lesson is the baptism. I know we've done, I kind of done a series on born of the water and born of the spirit and now the baptism. Because a lot of times, brothers and sisters, when we read in that John 3 and everybody there think that it's being baptized, that born of the water is being baptism. But we found out what born of the water is. Actually, brothers and sisters, you have to know about the word of God. That's right. Before that you even go to be baptized. And see, a lot of people, you know, this, this is the thing, brothers and sisters. In this day and time, it's pre people that's really looking for the Lord. And they're looking for Jesus. And people are tired of being lied to. And people, they are for real about the word of God. But listen to me. The Lord said in the last days there's going to be many that's going to deceive the people. And it's a lot of people that's deceiving the people this day and time. And I'm talking about false prophets, okay? Let's just get right down to Let's it, get it and just state it. A lot of people are going, they're going to be baptized. And when we start this off, we're going to start this off so you can turn your Bibles to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Because what the Lord say, the Lord says something here, but a lot of people are not hearing this. A lot of people are not hearing it. And the people think that they're, that they're going to be baptized, but brothers and sisters, they're not going to be baptized. They're not even baptized. They don't even know what the thing is, baptism. That's right. And then when you ask them, hey, you have the Holy Ghost? Oh, yeah. But you can just ask questions. You never have to say anything, but just Look, say, and what? Listen. And you'll hear the people that where they're in error. But brothers and sisters, let's pick this up in Matthew, the 28th chapter. I'm not going to do a lot of talking. We're going to let the book speak for itself. That's right, brother. Matthew 28 and verse 18. Matthew 28 and verse 18. When you get it, brother, go ahead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What did the Lord say? First of all, brothers and sisters, this is when Jesus was crucified and he got up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ahead. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, you see what he said? And he was talking to his disciples here, brothers and sisters. He said, go ye therefore, teach all nations. What does teach mean? Give them some knowledge. To what? Direct, to inform, or to enlighten, or to what? Indoctrinate. That's what teach means. So the Lord wants you to be indoctrinated. He wants you to be indoctrinated with this word of the Bible and not of men's understanding. But he said, go ye there. He said, and baptize in the name of the Father. Is the Father a name? No. Is the Son? No. Is that a name? No. He said, and in the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost a name? No. But the Holy Ghost has a name. See, this is what you have to come to the conclusion of understanding, brothers and sisters. When you come to the Lord God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hey, he's a God of knowledge. He's a God of wisdom. He's a God of understanding. He's a God of revelation. And when you become a part of the family of God, guess what? The whole heaven rejoice over you. That's right. And when you become that, when you become a part of the family, guess what? You learn family secrets. You know what family secrets are? That's something what nobody else knows. But that's only if you become a part of of this family and we're going to find out how you become a family of God in the, in the family of God you come in the family of God by being baptized but you have to know what you're being baptized of let's go here let's go to Proverbs the 30th chapter mm -hmm. and I want you brothers and sisters to write this down and take it back and go back and read over it because hey 
In these last days and times, there are many false prophets coming, brothers and sisters, and they deceive you. If you don't know your words, you don't know your book, they're going to lie to you and twist you up each and every way. Remember, the Lord said in that 28th chapter, but you got to understand in Ephesians, the second chapter, the 20th verse, he said, this thing is built among the what? Foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That's Jesus right, Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yes, sir. All of this is built off of the prophets and the apostles. If you don't go to the old and the new, you are never known. That's right. And when you say that you're a New Testament Christian, and hey, all you're going to do is just the New Testament, you'll never know this. You'll never know who name to be baptized in. That's why when we was there in the Sunday churches, what did everybody get baptized in? You got baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Ghost. Some titles. And what what's and I'm asking now, when you was baptizing that, did they put you in the water? And you came up, right? And they say, you're new in Christ now, didn't they? You know what? You was just dumped in the water. Nothing happened. Because no name was called over you. That's right, brother. And see, Jesus is telling you this, but you have to understand what Jesus is talking about. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, and let's pick this up at verse 2. Go ahead, brother. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. Uh-huh. I neither learn wisdom, nor I have the knowledge of the holy. So this brother is telling you that he don't have the knowledge of the holy. He said he's a brutish man. You know what brutish means? That means ignorant. And each and every one of us was ignorant before we came into this word of God and before we got baptized and, hey, say that we, all that the Lord told us to do, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and finish reading, brother. Verse 4. Uh-huh. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered up the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Uh-huh. Who hath established all the ends of the earth? These are questions now, but I want to ask you this next one. Go ahead. What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Now, that was a question that was asked. He say, he want to ask you, what is his name? Mm -hmm. And what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Now, so many people I've heard in this world, in this earth, since I've been living, mm -hmm. told me different names. What is the father's name? They told me it's Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Some say, Yahweh. Yahweh. Some say, Yah, Yah. But I say, okay, let's finish reading what this book say. That's right. See, because I know it's an organization started off of a name, Jehovah. And they say the Father is Jehovah. But we're going to see in here if Jehovah is the Father. We're going to go through this piece by piece. That's why I want you to write this down. Yes, sir. I want you to look at it. I want you to turn it around, even look at your Bible, because you ain't going to know this was in your Bible today. Because you know what? We're blowing the dust off there of it today go. so that your eyes may come open. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead to Exodus, the sixth chapter. See, because that was a wise question, wasn't it? That was a good question. That was a good question. Let's go ahead to Exodus, the sixth chapter. See, because this is what a lot of my brothers, Hebrew Israelites, you know, they don't want to believe in that name of Jesus. See, but we're going to go back here and we're going to read some here in the sixth chapter. And see, now this is about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now these are the patriarchs. These are the patriarchs of Israel. But let's read this and see what the Lord say right here. Six and one. Six and one. Pick it up, brother. What does it say? Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what work I will do, what I will do unto Pharaoh. Uh-huh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong band Hand shall I drive, shall he drive, excuse me, them out of his land. Go ahead, brother. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And no, I, he say, I am the Lord, and go ahead. And I appeared unto Abraham. He said he appeared unto who? Abraham. Abraham. And unto who? Unto Isaac. And who? And unto Jacob. By the what? By my name of God Almighty. Uh-huh. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now, these are the patriarchs. 
This is where Israel started from. This is where Israel became a nation out of Jacob. Mm -hmm. But he said, unto who? Abraham, mm -hmm. unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. Mm -hmm. They didn't know him by the name, what? Job. But they knew him by God Almighty. Almighty. So you mean to tell me, see, brothers and sisters, that name Jehovah wasn't back then. Mm -hmm. That's when the patriarchs was around. Yep. So when did Jehovah become known? But let's go finish reading. Let's go here to John, the first chapter. St. John, the first chapter. And we're going to read one verse here. See, but I want you to pay close attention, see, because you'll never learn this in the churches. You'll never learn this in the Sunday church. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to put it right flat to you, brothers and sisters. Hey, all they want to do is tell you they're going to have a Holy Ghost good time, dance, and hey, raise offering, dance, and raise an offering, and tell you nothing. So why would you go spend your money for all that you labor for? Why you go spend that for nothing? That's what he's saying. And you don't get fed. St. John 1 and verse 18. St. John 1 and verse 18. What does it say, brother? No man has seen God at any time. Uh-huh. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. Did you just pay attention to what he said? He said... No man has seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. And which God is we talking about? Father. We're talking about the Father. No man has seen the Father at any time, but the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only one that told us about the one and true only God. See, when Jesus came down on earth, he said, hey, he didn't make no form and no reputation about him. He, right. he took upon him what? Form. As being a servant. That's right, brother. He was God, but he was manifest in the flesh. But he told us about a God that we did not know of. And that's why the people was mad at Jesus, because he said he was God. You tell me you God? But let's go read. Let's go to Exodus 24 chapter. See, because brothers and sisters, I want to take you the long way around because sometimes you appreciate it when you, when you just go get it, but somebody just drops something in your lap. Teach you it, don't appreciate Teach it too it, much. Brother. Teach it. But see, when you go and study, see, this is the Israel of God Bible study. That's right. Yeah, we're a church, but this is a Bible study. When you come to class, when you go to school, you get your book, paper, and pencil. You're supposed to jot these things down. But let's read this. It says, no man has seen God, at right? At any time. At any time, right? Mm -hmm. But Jesus declared him unto us, That's right? That's right. That's so let's go read this. Hebrew, I mean, Exodus 24 and verse 9. Exodus 24 and 9. What does it say, brother? Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel. Mm-hmm. And they saw the God of Israel. Well, you, it, it was 74 elders in all, brother. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, bag up to one. Bag, bag up, up to one. one. All right. And then we'll skip back down. Bag up to one, because I want everybody to know this. Go okay. ahead, brother. And he said unto Moses, come up unto the Lord, thou, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. Uh-huh. Now skip down, back down to nine. So there were 74 people, because what did it say? Moses, mm -hmm. Aaron, Nadab. Nadab, and Abihu. Mm -hmm. That's the four. And the rest is the 70. So it's 74 people that we're going to read about that saw God. But go ahead and finish reading at 9. What does it say? Verse 9. Uh -huh. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. Oh, but I thought nobody seen the God. I thought no man had seen God at any time. But this said they saw the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And what, brother? And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. And it was, and as it were the body of heaven in its clearness. Uh-huh. And verse 11, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. So they saw God, and it said that, hey, he laid not his hand mm -hmm. upon them. Mm -hmm. Upon these 74 people, he laid not his hand there on them. But what else? And they saw God and did eat and drink. You see that? It say, but they saw God and they did eat and drink. Let's go here to 
St. John, the fifth chapter. See, because we're going to let the book clear all this up. That's right. But see, brothers and sisters, this is what you have to do. You have to rightfully divide the word of God. Mm -hmm. See, because people can come with hocus pocus, all kind of things to you. <laughs> and when you just tell me you're a New Testament Christian, I know when you tell me that, that you do not know anything about the Lord. You hear me? Amen. And I want you to, I'm going to repeat this again. When you tell me you're a New Testament Christian, I know that you do not know anything about the Lord God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Point blank. Tell it. St. John 5, and let's pick it up at verse 37. St. John 5 and verse 37. What does it say? And the Father himself, which has sent me. Now listen what Jesus is saying. Isn't this your red writing in your Bible? Yes, sir. He said, and the Father himself, which has sent me, go ahead. Has borne witness of me. Uh-huh. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So who was that that we saw, that they saw back there in Exodus? That was Jesus. But his name was Jehovah at that time. And before Jesus came on the scene, he was Jehovah. He was Yahweh. Yes, he was the, he, this is the only God that we have dealt with. The Father has never dealt with us, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. This man, Jesus, was God, came, turned into man, got up from the grave, mm -hmm. and ascended back to heaven, and sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's God again. That's right. But that's the only God that we've dealt with. Skip down to 39. What does it say? Search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Uh huh. And they are they which are which testify of me. This is what Jesus is telling you. He says, Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody, yeah, you know, Jesus is just a sweet song. <laughs> Jesus is just a sweet song. All everybody hallowed knew you to death. And then tell you don't stand by them. What you drink some wine? Yeah. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't supposed to drink no wine, but they holy. Yeah. And they holy than thou. And the Lord say these folks are smoking his nose. Everything. But you let them ask one thing, they don't know nothing about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, sir, they don't. But he said, you think you have eternal life. Go ahead and finish this, brother. First Go forward. ahead. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. He said, you will not come to him that you might have life. Go ahead. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, and that ye have not the love of God in you. Uh-huh. I have come in my Father's name. What did Jesus tell you? What did Jesus tell you right there? I he said, I come Father's in my name. Father's name. Remember, brothers and sisters, Jesus inherited a name that was above all names. That's right. When he was mentioned from his mother's womb, the angel Gabriel said that his name shall be called Jesus. That's right. And he's going to be the son of the highest. This is the father's name, brothers and sisters. The father's name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not Jehovah. Not Yahweh. Not Yah. <laughs> not Jah. Can, if anything is sick, do I say in the name of Jehovah, I tell you to be healed? Mm -mm. If anything is dead in the earth, do I say I tell you to rise in the name of Jehovah? It ain't going to happen. Ain't no power in that name. Mm -hmm. We don't do that name no more. The name is what? Jesus. It says if someone dead and you say in the name of Jesus, I command you to get up. What happened? Those get up. It gets up. If you sick, it say you call for the elders of the church, they right. anoint you, and they pray over you, and they say in the name of Jesus, get up out of that bed. What's supposed to happen? Be healed. Get up. It's power. Isn't that why that song is? It's power, power, wonder working power. In the what? Name of Jesus. Hey, you know it. But you learned that Sunday, didn't you? In the Sunday church. Hey, yeah. uh-huh. But we're going we're gonna to straighten it all out for you. We're going to straighten it all out for you today. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Middle of 43. Go ahead, brother. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, hey, he will receive me. Now, now, you catch that? If another, 
come in his own name, Reverend Doctor Potentate. Big Cleflo Dollar. Man. You'll receive him. Yeah. You'll receive Reverend Dr. Jones. Yeah. You'll receive all of them. But when you say, hey, Jesus, you don't want to hear that name. Mm -mm. And that's what all our Hebrew brothers are saying. It's not in that same name. Thing, same thing, brother. But go ahead and finish reading, brother. Verse 44. Uh-huh. How can ye believe which ye receive, which receive honor of one of another? Uh-huh. And seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do you th not think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Right. And you know what, brothers and sisters? It says, and, 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 and the people in this day and time, they don't believe in Moses. Because mm -hmm. they say Moses is done away with. Yeah, that's what they say. Isn't that what they say? The Old Testament is done away with. But look what it says. Go home. Go on and read. Verse 46. Uh-huh. For, for had ye believed Moses... You would have believed me. Uh-huh. For he wrote of me. Right. See, Moses wrote of no other than Jesus. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if you don't go get this Old Testament, and you're just telling me you're a New Testament Christian, you don't know about Jesus. I just proved that to you right there. That's it. This is what the book say now. This ain't what Brother Garvin's saying. This is what the book, aren't we reading this all together? Yes, sir. Finish that next verse out. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my word? That's right. So if you don't believe in Moses, if you don't believe in this Old Testament, I told you the foundation and everything was built upon who? The apostles and the who? Prophets. And if you don't read the apostles and the prophets, if you don't read the old, you don't read the new, the scriptures are from what? Genesis, Genesis to Malachi. Malachi. That's right. And the New Testament is from what? Matthew Matthews to Revelation. To Revelation. Yes, sir. So if you don't deal with the apostles and the prophets, hey, you don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's go here to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Isaiah 45 and verse 20. You get it, brother? Yes, Go sir. ahead. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the, set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto God, unto a, a God that cannot save. Do you understand what the Lord is telling you? Brothers and sisters, we just seen, oh, it's supposed to be the papa that came to the United yeah. States this week. Yeah. Everybody running after the papa. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise the papa. Oh, he kissed the little baby on his head. Oh, papa, touch me. Yeah. Ain't nothing in the papa. Nothing. He a man. And he gonna die just like you and I. Mm -hmm. Why is he telling everybody, pray for me? Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen a pope say, pray for me. Yeah. He was doing all the plan praying and blessing, yeah. wasn't he? And sprinkling wild on everybody. <laughs> Ain't that what he was doing? That's what he was doing. But everybody, I see this boy come. Pray for me. Yeah. Because they say he say he's scared he and say he's going to get killed. He better be. <laughs> but we're going to read this. Let's go on. Let's go on, brother. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who have declared this from the ancient time? Who have declared this from the ancient time? Go ahead. Who have told it from that time? Have, I, have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside, none beside me. Now you see what the Lord is saying? Ain't no God beside him. Read that last part over. Read that last part over. And a just God. And, and a just God. You see what he's saying? And a just God. And what? And a Savior. And a Savior. Who's the Savior? Is the Father the Savior? No, sir. The Father didn't come down here and die for you. Mm -mm. The Father didn't come shed his blood. See, that Jehovah, hey, it, we're going to read Jehovah is our salvation now. He became our salvation. He didn't use that name no more. He inherited a name that was above all names. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, brother. 
and there is none beside me. Uh-huh. Verse 22. Go ahead. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Uh-huh. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. Mm -hmm. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. You see what the Lord said? He said that at the knee, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. Mm -hmm. this, this in the prophets, isn't it? This in the prophets. Let's go up to the New Testament. Philippians, the second chapter. See, that's why I say, brothers and sisters, it's built upon... Hmm? You going to Philippians? I'm going to Philippians. All right, got gotcha. you. We just finished 45, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay, brother. <laughs> let me let me let me you be the captain the of this one. Yeah, you Thank drive you, brother. The okay, let's go to Philippians. Philippians two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse five. Philippians 2 and verse 5. What does it say? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Hold on. I still see some people turning. All right. Let the people get there because I want everybody, I want us to be on one accord. All reading this thing together. Mm -hmm. 2, Philippians 2 and verse 5. Is everyone there? Go ahead, brother. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, uh -huh. but made himself of no reputation. But made of himself no reputation, go ahead. And took upon him the form of a servant. Go ahead. And was made in the likeness of men. He was made in the likeness of man, but go ahead. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Oh, it said he was highly exalted. What was highly exalted? His name. You see that? God gave him a name that is above every name. So is he going to give him a, a name above his? No. But look what he say. Go ahead and finish reading. Verse 10. Uh-huh. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Now, didn't we just read that? We just read that in Isaiah 14. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is letting you know all over this book who he is. Mm -hmm. Ain't no God on the side of me. Ain't no Savior on the side of me. Nope. Ain't nobody. Jesus just sitting on the right hand of the Father. This is what we got to understand. And that's why he's telling you, ain't no other God. Ain't no other God nowhere. You ain't never dealt with no other God. You ain't never seen no other God. You ain't seen me. You ain't dealt with me. Only me. Read that 11 and what it say. And that it, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, let's go here to Isaiah the 12th chapter. But you see, what are we doing, brothers and sisters? I'm just asking you right now. What are we doing? We're going from old to what? To new. From new what? To old. Because he said it's built upon the what? Apostles. Apostles and the prophets. That's what it's built on. And just like I say, brothers and sisters, if you don't go this way, I know. You just tell me you're a New Testament Christian. I know you don't know the Lord. And hey, them some hard words to say to some people. That's right. And people get mad about that. And the people will want to fight you for that. Isaiah 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 12 and 1. What does it say? And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, uh -huh. thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Now, this is Israel talking. But hey, Israel, hey, they turn back to the Lord. But go ahead and finish reading. Behold, God is my salvation. He said, Behold, God is my salvation. And see, now, listen to what they say. Behold, God is my salvation. Now, everybody in the world that you know always talking about a God, right? But when they say, hey, God told me to tell you. What God told you to tell me? 
Well, you know, Buddha told me to take No. <laughs> I don't know that God. Harry Krishna. Mm-mm-mm. I don't know that God. That Jesus that got up early Sunday morning. I don't know that God. You understand what I'm saying? Allah told me to tell you, I, I don't know nothing about Allah. You understanding? The whole world comes with what? God. Satan is a God. He's a God of what? This world. Of this world. Right now running it. That's right. So what God you talking to me? What God you telling me? What God you baptizing me in? You got to know this. We got to understand it. Go ahead and finish reading. Where are we? Middle of two. Go ahead. I will trust it and not be afraid. He said, I will trust and not be afraid. Go ahead. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Uh huh. He also has become my salvation. So Jehovah, he ain't using that name no more, Jehovah. And when you read in Revelation, it said Jesus has many crowns that's on his that's head. He He's a lots of names. The Rose of Sharon, the Prince of Peace, mm-hmm. the King of Kings, mm-hmm. the Lord of Lords. It's a lot of names that, hey, he's also our high priest, isn't he? That's what he's saying. A lot of names are on his head. But the name that he go in is what? Jesus. Jesus. So Jehovah has become our what? Salvation. Salvation, go ahead. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And in that day shall he say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Call upon whose name? His name. Who is his name? Jesus. Let me hear the whole class say it. What's his name? That's it. And don't let nobody tell you other. Don't let no man deceive you. Don't let no Hebrew Israelite come and tell you, hey, Jesus ain't the name. You got to say, Yahshua. Mm-hmm. No. Finish that, brother. Declare his doings among the people. Uh huh. Make mention that his name is exalted. Make mention that what? His name is exalted. And you got to exalt the name of Jesus. That's right. Let's go here to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, the third chapter. Like I say, brothers and sisters, hey, this is simple, but a lot of people don't know this. And this is hard for a lot of people. And when you break this thing down, brothers and sisters, you have to know something. You got to know who your God is and that you're going to be baptized in. If you don't know what you're going to be baptized in, shame on you. Because you have not done your homework. And when you go and be baptized over there in that water, a pond, in a lake, in the Jordan River, mm-hmm. and you don't know what you're talking about, about Jesus, you're playing with yourself. That's right. First Timothy 3 and verse 16. First Timothy 3 and 16. What does it say? It and says, Jehovah has become our salvation. Let's see who this Jehovah is. Go ahead, brother. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who was manifest in the flesh, people? Uh-uh. There you go. He God. But who was manifest in the flesh? Jesus. Jesus. Go ahead. Justified in the spirit. Uh-huh. Seen of angels. Go ahead. Preached unto the Gentile. What is the Gentile? Now, I'm going to ask you one thing. It says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name shall be great among the Gentiles. And what do the white people call him? Jesus. Hey, plain and simple. But you got to read to know this. You got to read to know this. If you don't read and you just plan with yourself, did we finish that out? No, in the, in the 16. Finish it out. Believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hey, did he go back into heaven? Mm-hmm. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father? This is Jesus. Let's go here to Acts, the fourth chapter. Acts 4. And I know, hey, I'm trying to take this thing so simple the way that you can see this thing. Mm-hmm. 
And every which way I've taken you, you see that name is lining up. Paint it's the who? picture, brother. It's Jesus. I got to paint the picture for you. I'm the artist today. And everywhere I'm taking you to, and I'm painting that picture, and every time it come out, when we get through, we're writing J-E-S. What? U-S. That's it. Acts 4 and 10. Acts 4 and 10. What does it say, brother? Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, uh -huh. that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. Whom our forefathers crucified. Go ahead. Whom God raised from the dead. Uh-huh. Even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Right. That's what Peter then was telling him. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, we crucified Jesus. We didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus. But, hey, Peter them didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. By the name of Jesus, that man was made whole. That's why I said, when you go heal the sick, what name you heal it in? Jesus. When the dead, you want to raise the dead, what name do you raise it in? Jesus. That's it. So that man was sick, and he was made whole right there mm -hmm. by the name of Jesus. Go ahead and read. This is the stone which was set at naught uh -huh. of you builders, which, ye, which has become the head of the corner. Yes, sir, because Jesus has become the head of the church, brothers and sisters. The Father has given him everything, delivered everything into his hands. Jesus did all the work. When the Father told Jesus, hey, they're going to take sweet cows together, guess what they done? Hey, one say, I'm going to be the father, and one say, I'm going to be the son, and I'm going to tell them about you. Jesus came down to the earth because when Adam and Eve sinned, hey, they took that vow right then to go down to save us, the savage man. That's right. Go ahead and finish reading, brother. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for this is none other than under the... I'm sorry, let me start it up. Neither is there salvation in any other. He said, neither is there salvation in any other. For, for what? Is, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So, brothers and sisters, are you to be saved in Jehovah? No. Are you to be saved in... <laughs> are you to be saved in Yahweh? No, no. Are you to be saved in Allah? What name we supposed to be saved in? Jesus. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Amen, you see it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go here to Ephesians, the third chapter. Ephesians, the third chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Ephesians 3 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead, brother. And to make all men see what is the fellowship. Ho, ho. It said to make all men see. What am I trying to make you see? That this name is who? No other than Jesus. Look what it said. To make all men see. Go ahead. What is the fellowship of the mystery? Of Did the you? mystery. Did you just catch that? Because this name Jesus is the mystery on the people. Because when you reject Jesus, you'll never find Jesus. You'll never know who Jesus is. Now, some people say Jesus ain't came yet. That's what they say. Ain't that what they say? They say, we still waiting on the Messiah. I said, well, you're going to be waiting. And when he come and he gathers his people, you're going to be casting that lake of fire. Go ahead and finish reading, brother. Which is from the beginning of the world has, has been hid in God. He say has been hid in God. This has been hidden. Go ahead. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. All. Oh, who created. So Jesus created the earth. That's mm -hmm. letting you know a little something right here. The Father didn't create nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus created all of it. Things visible and invisible. Go ahead and read, brother. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Right, because God is giving you his knowledge. The church is supposed to know this. Who is the church? It ain't this building. No, no. The church is who? Each and every one of you. Go ahead and finish reading. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have, the, have boldness and access with, the, with confidence 
by faith of him. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. You see what the Lord is saying? So don't faint, brothers and sisters. All kind of tribulation going to come up on you. All kind of people going to talk about you. All kind of people call us cult. Mm -hmm. All kind of people, they talk and they say everything, but you got to hold on. You can't faint. You know, that's why I asked you, you remember last week when I asked you, not last week, but the week before, I said, how many feel like they want to give up? Everybody in here raised their hands, didn't they? We can't give up. You know why we can't give up? See, I'm, 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 I'm going to share this with you. It says, we come to this, we are a prisoner of the Lord now. Didn't Paul say he was a mm -hmm. prisoner of Christ? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. When you go to jail, when most folks go to jail, they say, man, I can't handle this. I can't go to jail. Why you can't go to jail? Because they're going to tell you to sit down, be quiet. You might stay in that cell 12 hours, yep. and you might get out one hour. You might stay in there 40 hours a week and get out two days a week. And the cell so little, who can stand that? Who can stand that? Have you seen people say, hey, man, if I go back to jail, I'm going to kill myself. Why are they talking about killing themselves? Mm -hmm. See, because when you become a prisoner, you don't own this body no more. Once you go and be baptized and the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. is over you, you do not own this anymore. You can't do what you want to with this body anymore. You can't say what you want no more. You got to, hey, and believe me, Everything I'm telling you, you might be saying, Brother Godman, you're going overboard, man. No. I'm telling you the truth. Man, sometimes, boy, I be like, whoo, I wish I'd have never found this. But I'm glad that I found it. But listen to what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, because the thing is, when you can't get to do what you want to do, hey, it makes problems for you. There's a lot of stuff I still want to do, but I can't do it. That's right. Man, I love to not keep the Sabbath today. I love to go to some parades and go to picnics and barbecues. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you? Amen. But I can't do it. That's right. See, this is what we have to find out about this word of God, brothers and sisters, because this is a serious thing. That's why he said to make all men see. I'm trying to make you see this thing. Let you know the realness of what's going on when you go take and say, hey, I'm going to do what does say the Lord. I'm ready to be baptized. So that's why when brothers and sisters come in here and they say, man, brother, I'm ready to be baptized. I say, brother, hold on. Give yourself about six months. I give yourself a year. And you know yourselves, brothers and sisters. You look around. Look around. We ain't baptized a whole lot of people, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Do you see them? Nope. You don't see them. You know why you don't see them? Because they did not understand what they were doing. They didn't know the seriousness of this thing. That's right. That's right. So they think they just, you know, because you hear people say, hey, Jesus paid the cost for everything. <laughs> he paid the price. That's what they say. So if he paid the price, that means I can go do whatever I want, and guess what? I'm going to make it in the kingdom. That's the biggest lie told to you. You ain't got no works. <laughs> what? You ain't going to enter. That's right. And what's the works you got to have? You got to keep them commandments. That's it. If you don't keep the commandments, hey, it's a change that's supposed to come when you get baptized. It ain't supposed to be the same thing. I ain't supposed to tell the sister, hey, sister, uh, when your husband leaves, go around there, and when he leaves, I'm going to be outside, and you pull the shades down three times. And when you pull the shades down three times, then come on over there and open that side door, and I'm coming in. You can't do that no more. Because what's that? Committing what? Can't do that no more. That's right. Where are we at, brother? 14. Go ahead and read. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He said, in whom the whole family 
in heaven and earth is named. What so what said. is the whole family of heaven and earth named? Jesus. It's named Jesus. See, brothers and sisters, you got to understand what God means. God means of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And it's two members of that family now. It's Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. And all what God is trying to do, what the Father and the Son are trying to do, are come and make us gods. That's what it is, brother. That's and we're going to be a family of gods. That's right. It's just two members in it now. Remember, when you go be on the basketball team, does Michael Jordan make up the whole team? It's a team, right? Mm -hmm. Just the same way in God's family. It's many members. Let's go here. Let's go to Luke, the 15th chapter. Luke 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Luke 15 and verse 1. Because, brothers and sisters, this is what I told you earlier. When you go do this here, just because of one sinner, this is what the Lord tell you about. And if you have the, the knowledge and the mind, you will go leave. You have a hundred sheep, and if one of them leaves, that means you got to go get him. That's what it say. The Lord will lead the 99, and he'll go search and look for that which is lost. And once he finds it, brothers and sisters, he say he pick it up and he put it on his shoulder, and he rejoice. And the whole heaven rejoice over what? Over one That's sinner. That's right. Rather than 99, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The whole heaven. And you know what? who's in heaven? The angels. Because you're going to become a part of the family of God. Which is named Jesus. Mm -hmm. But let's go read this. Let's go read it. Luke 15 and verse 1. What does it say, brother? Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Uh-huh. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. See, what, what you mean that Jesus received sinners mm -hmm. and he eat it with them? That's what his whole thing was to come, to save the sinner. And see, that's what some of us get so holy in doubt. Oh, you know, such and such, you know, they sin, but you ain't sin. Didn't nobody see your sin. That's right. But your sin came out. And you will point that finger and you will put that finger on that brother and sister, but yours right there. But then if the Lord let yours come out the closet, boy, you will, you will fall out. But that's what the Lord came to do what? Save the sinner. That's, right. that's why he came. He was eating and drinking with them. That's right. They say John the Baptist came neither eating and drinking, and they say he had a devil. That's what they say. But they say Jesus came eating and drinking. He was drinking wine and sitting down with the sinners and everybody talking, and they say he had a devil. So which one are you going to? Which one? <laughs> which one? You ain't got to eat and drink, and you still have a devil? Then you can come eating and drinking, you still, man, that's confusion, confusion isn't it? Confusion, brother. Go ahead and finish reading this, brother. Verse 3. Uh-huh. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Uh-huh. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave and the ninety-nine in the, in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Right. Go ahead. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he had come at home, he called us together, his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Uh-huh. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Right. See, so, brothers and sisters, the Lord will rejoice over one person that sinned. See, because if everybody righteous, hey, the Lord said, who need a physician? What? You got to go to the doctor, right? That's right. But That's if right. you don't need no doctor, you don't need no physician, that means you're righteous. Yep. So the Lord will leave you and go get that one that needs some healing, that needs some help. Let's go here to Ephesians, the first chapter.
Are y'all seeing this, brothers and sisters? Amen, brother. Teach. It ain't no other name. And don't let nobody fool you with that. Ephesians 1 and verse 17. Ephesians 1 and verse 17. Go ahead, brother. 